Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, literally means practice of the wheel of law and is a Chinese spiritual movement which was started in 1992 by Li Hongzhi. Central to Falun Gong are five sets of exercises that involve meditation and are claimed to help in the purification of the mind and body. The practice has grown swiftly in popularity around the world. And here to tell us about it is Joel Chipkar, spokesman for the Falun Dafa Association of Canada. Thanks for coming in. Oh, my pleasure. Now, I think the first question that I would like to ask is really in response to the phenomenal growth. And, you know, as I mentioned, it was started in 1992, and yet already across the world there are thousands, if not more, practitioners of Falun Gong. Before we get into what is Falun Gong, maybe you could tell me a bit more about this phenomenal success of growth. Well, it's actually hat in hand. It's the, the reason why it's so popular is because of what it is. Mm -hmm. um, in 1992, when this, when this exercise and meditation uh, um, uh, system debuted in China, it spread across China faster than any spiritual teaching in history because it focused on the cultivation of the mind and the body. Mm -hmm. It's actually a very profound spiritual discipline that helps people become better people to, to as assimilate to the principles of what the Chinese call Zhen Shen Ren, or truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, mm -hmm. and to help upgrade morality, help upgrade virtue, so you can ascend, so you can um, uh, ascend, reach consummation, or what Westerners t call um, uh, reaching heaven, mm -hmm. go to heaven. It's a very powerful spiritual discipline. And it started to spread across China because people were becoming a lot more peaceful. They were becoming a lot more content. They were treating mm -hmm. their families better, better, better work at, in their workplaces. It had very clear results from the practice, you mean? Huge results. It mm -hmm. was supported and awarded by the, uh, the, the communist government, actually. It was mm -hmm. endorsed by the communist regime to, to give lectures throughout China. The uh, Public Security Bureau, which is like uh, the CIA or the FBI, mm -hmm. uh, awarded it for bringing back the crime-fighting virtues in society. Mm -hmm. News reports were saying that it had brought, uh, it had saved the government billions of dollars in health care costs because the old premise is if your mind is peaceful, your body will follow. Mm -hmm. And it is a sort true, of a preventative medicine. Very treating, much so. Treating yeah. health as a way of sustaining health rather than treating illness as something to fix after the fact. Exactly. Especially in China, mm -hmm. the health system is, is, is atrocious. There, there really is no health system. So um, to bring back a very powerful Qigong system, a very powerful uh, system to help cultivate the mind and the body was very, very popular. Well, and it's interesting how you mentioned that initially it was very much supported by the Chinese state, the Chinese Communist Party, yeah. uh, throughout its uh, apparatus. And yet, perhaps how we know of it in the West is quite the opposite, as being persecuted and repressed by the Chinese state. Mm. Can you tell us a bit about how that flip happened or why that flip happened? It was actually um, because of its popularity. Mm -hmm. uh, you had it grew so quickly that it, it almost became a threat, I guess, to the, the Communist Party. You had 70 to 100 million people practicing Falun Gong, wow. which was, which was a, a, a number given by the Communist regime itself. Which means it was probably much higher than that. Oh, yeah. It was, that, that's, that, in that figure, it's one out of 12 Chinese people. Wow. And again, it was something that was very respected and very supported. But what happened in 1994 was the government saw this uh, huge growth of people who were practicing Falun Gong. Like, you could see... And this is after only two years. Only after two years. You could mm -hmm. see thousands of people throughout the parks in China every morning doing these beautiful exercises, like these beautiful slow motion exercises and, mm -hmm. you know, learning to be good people, to, to live their lives between tr truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Mm -hmm. So the government said, this is really great. We want to start charging for this practice. We right. want to start making money off of this. We want to be in control. We want it. to be in control of it. And mm -hmm. the thing is, in China, you have your religions. You have your Buddhism. You have your Taoism. You have your Christianity. You have, you know, you have your Catholicism. Mm -hmm. But these are all governed by the Chinese Communist Party. Right. You cannot have a religion or believe in a religion if you do not put the Communist Party above your belief in God. Mm -hmm. So all these priests and, and monks, they're not ordained they're appointed by the state. Right. So in fact, they're almost politicians. Yeah. So you have Falun Gong that comes in, it's free, excuse me, it's free of any sort of uh, government control. Mm -hmm. The government wants to control it. First of all, they want to charge money for it. Mm -hmm. So they approached the founder and they said, listen, this is great. We've been endorsing you to, to do these, these things around China, these lectures. We want to start making money off mm -hmm. of your practice. Mm -hmm. The founder said, no. This is a spiritual discipline. It's for the health of the people. It's not for sale. Mm -hmm. At the time, he was also 
uh, there's there's a, a an organization called the China Qigong Research Society, and it's like the arm of the Chinese government that kind of oversees Qigong, uh, mm -hmm. Tai Chi, mm -hmm. uh, Falun Gong. And at the time, Falun Gong was also in this <clears throat> China Qigong Research Society. But when the government tried to capitalize on the teaching, the founder had to pull out of the China Qigong Research Society. Mm -hmm. Once he pulled out, that's when the government started to badmouth him. And, and is it safe to assume, I mean, I'm, I'm inferring this from your comments, but is it safe to assume that it has a very decentralized or even autonomous structure? Because by the sounds of it, anyone, once they learn the practices, <clears throat> could practice on their own in any physical setting without need of a church or mosque or a specific temple in which to actually engage in the activities. That's, that's the amazing part about it, is it, is, it, it does have a central, uh, a very, a very powerful creed, a very powerful belief in God, a very powerful mm -hmm. belief in truthfulness, compassion, and, and, and tolerance, mm -hmm. forbearance. Um, but there is no worship, there is no ritual, there is no uh, organization, mm -hmm. no churches. So you're very, very free. When I first started practicing back in 98, I was at home. I was mm -hmm. reading the, the theory at home. I was doing my exercise at home. And I started to really kind of want to go and, and uh, uh, be with other practitioners because there you can, you know, when you're doing the exercises, some of them, they're very peaceful, but some of them are, are, are a little bit challenging where mm -hmm. you have to hold a certain posture for, you know, for a certain period of time. And it's, it's great to be around people who can motivate you, you know, because mm -hmm. if you're getting tired, you open your eye and you see the 71-year-old lady doing the same <laughs> thing that you're doing, you know, with a and smile she's on her face. No, showing no strain. Showing no strain. It's like, okay, I can do this too, you know. So mm -hmm. it's, it was really good for me to be with other practitioners. This has been really interesting, and fortunately, we'll be able to continue this conversation in a moment. We're talking about the Falun Gong, and we'll be right back with more on this topic after this short break. You're watching 3D Dialogue. This program is brought to you in part by Rogers Wireless and by the Toronto Blue Jays. Call the Rogers Television Viewer Response Line at 1-800-939-7787 or visit our website with your comments. 